Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a project to share with you today. We're in the middle of our Marco Polo main lesson block for our homeschool and we're getting a ton of inspiration from this book called Marco Polo for Kids, His Marvelous Journey to China by Janice Herbert. It contains 21 activities and today we are going to make the mandala activity. Now I didn't have all of the supplies on hand so I'm going to make a few changes but I think it turns out amazing in the end. Now this is our geometry book that we worked on a couple years ago Ago, and we're going to be using that for our mandala rather than making original designs but you can find that complete playlist on how we made all of these fold symmetries down in the description box below. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a bit of tracing paper over our mandala designs or our geometric designs. Now, if you didn't want to do this, you could just use a spare sheet of paper and create your design on that sheet of paper. So now I need to make my colored sand and I didn't have any and I wanted to use the materials that I had on hand. So I'm going to use some chalk from our chalk drawings, but I'm going to use all the colors that we end up having a lot of excess of because we tend to go through a lot of the earth tones pretty quickly. And so we have some of those brighter greens, yellows and pinks left over. So we're going to use that to make our colored sand. So I'm going to use this tiny little hammer from my scrapbooking supplies in order to gently break apart our chalks. It's actually super easy to do and quite satisfying. And we're gonna get it into a nice powder. This is gonna be really highly pigmented and I'm going to be adding this to sand. However, my sand was outside, it got wet, and I decided to use salt instead because my sand wasn't gonna dry in time for this project. So I've got my 10 year old daughter on the left and my 14 year old son on the right who are helping me make the powdered a chalk for our colored sand or our colored salt and so they're having a really great time grinding that down. Next I'm going to add that chalk dust into little watercolor containers and add salt. At first I add about equal parts salt and chalk powder and I'm going to screw that lid on tight and mix it up and it looks really great and so then I think I can probably add some more salt to this and still retain quite a bit of the color and sure enough you can. So in the end it's about two to one ratio of salt to powder but you can play around with your proportions and find something that works well for you. Overall this was a really quick way to make this colored sand using supplies that I already had on hand. So we end up mixing about six to seven colors. Two colors were really similar. So we had about six colors, which I think is suitable for this project. The book recommends buying four different colors. And we are going to make some changes to the whole art of doing the mandalas because I didn't want to just make them and then dispose of them right away. We want to keep them. And so we we're going to try a couple different ways to keep our projects. So once we're done with all of the colors, they look fabulous, but we're not quite sure how we're going to get these onto our page. So I have these tiny little spoons from, again, my scrapbooking supplies, and I'm going to put a little spoon into each of our jars, and we might use those in order to create our designs. You can also put them into a little baggie and cut a little corner, but I found that because our salt was quite thick, it didn't come out as smoothly as I expected. So my 14 year old son is now choosing a design that he is going to use as his mandala and he settles on seven fold symmetry while my daughter settles on six fold symmetry. So I'm going to put that piece of tracing paper on top of our design and then using a pencil, I'm going to trace the design. So once I show my son how to trace the design and I've also taped down the tracing paper so it doesn't shift, he goes ahead and he does the whole thing and he does a fabulous job. It looks wonderful. And then my daughter does, her, does hers with a six fold symmetry. Next, I'm going to take that tracing paper and I'm going to tape it down onto a piece of chipboard and that's going to keep our whole design flat and movable once we are done. Next, I'm going to take some Tombow Mono Adhesive and I'm going to put some glue over the entire design. But because we use pencil, some of that glue starts to kind of smear the pencil a little, a little bit. 
So my 10 year old daughter is choosing the colors that she wants and I'm going to demonstrate how to do this and it's actually really challenging. She chose a really challenging design to do as well. It doesn't look quite as good in the end as the design that my son chose. Doing one that's a little bit larger with more white space in between actually looks a little bit better in the end. As you can see, as my son is working through his, it's looking fabulous. Once he's done, his is my favorite of all the projects. I do one as well, but his is my favorite. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to try some spray adhesive instead, and then I'm going to tape my design down on top of my original design, but I'm not going to trace it. I'm just going to use that as a template. I'm going to put some of that salt into a bag and see if that works out easier, but it doesn't. It's harder to use, it doesn't come out quite as easy, and I've got less control over how the design is going to look. So after I try this out, I end up going back to just using the spoon and working my design that way. So initially I wanted to save the de these designs and that's why I was using some glue on the paper, but the glue doesn't work super well and we end up dispose disposing of these in the end the way that you're supposed to after you make a sand mandala, but I really did try to attempt to save it, but actually it was more satisfying getting rid of it than it was keeping it. And initially I thought that I would feel really off about getting rid of a project after spending so much time making it but curiously we actually found it to be really releasing and therapeutic and it was kind of nice to let it go there's probably more ceremony in actually letting it go the way uh, that you're supposed to rather than the way that we did it but overall, I highly encourage you to try this project even with simple materials that you have on hand. You don't need to go out and buy the special sands in order to do this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information as well as pictures of all of the designs that we did. You can find that link down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see some of the other video tutorials that we're doing for our Marco Polo main lesson block, you can tap on the screen right now. That link is also in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.